plans to attend the Virginia Military Institute to study engineering. He also plans to attend basic next summer. Live from Devere Fair Stadium at Decatur Central High School, it's Indiana High School football as the 4-4 four four Decatur Central High School Hawks take on the 5-3 Franklin Community High School Grizzly Cubs. Good evening, I'm J.P. Sinclair and this is the Audio Sports Online pregame. Decatur is coming off of a loss to Ron Colley where turnovers plagued the Hawks as two fumbles by senior Eli Conlon doomed the Hawks to be forced to play from behind. Quarterback Tommy Stevens passed for 219 yards and was forced to attempt 30 passes as the Hawks were fell behind early. The Hawks look to rebound tonight, but they face a formidable challenge as they uh, will be facing one of the best defenses in the Mid-State Conference. For Franklin Community, they're coming off a loss against Greenwood, which saw the final score of 28-10. It was a game that ended their two-game winning streak. After jumping ahead 7-0 early, the Grizzly Cubs were held to a field goal for the remainder of the game. So it should be an interesting night as um, this is the last game of the season before sectional start. The Hawks will be playing Cathedral next Friday for that um, sectional draw. Um, between these two teams, uh, the Franklin Community Grizzly Cubs and the Decatur Central Hawks, the Hawks lead the all-time series between the two 6-1. Uh, to one. Last year was a dominant performance for Decatur, who ended up winning that game 40-14. to 14. It is also senior night here at Devere Fair Stadium, so a lot of the seniors are on the field and already being honored before tonight's game, as it is also a white uh, whiteout night as most of the fans are here wearing white. It will be a cold one. Um, game time uh, kickoff at 7 o'clock. Uh, it's supposed to be down to about 58 degrees. Uh, it will be mostly sunny, and the rain should hold off. Uh, there is rain in the forecast, but not till later tonight. Winds will be out of the west at 10 miles per hour, um, and the, the, uh, the temperature could reach 51 degrees before it's all said and done. So, uh, as I said, I'm J.P. Sinclair, and this is Audio Sports Online pregame. Uh, Decatur Central is looking to really rebound off of that loss that they had uh, last week against Ron Colley. We talked about the turnovers a little bit already. Um, we talked during that game about how uh, it was going to be imperative that the Hawks came out and scored first and tried to run up the score because that's how their defense is used to playing, and that's just not what happened last week. Um, and then they come in tonight and have to face one of the top defenses in the Mid-State Conference. The Decatur Central Hawks are coached by Dust Justin Dixon, um, he's 25 and 23 all time here in this Class 5A League uh, Mid State Conference. Um, the Hawks are scoring at a uh, impressive clip still, 52 points per game, but they're still giving up about 42 points per game. Um, and when you look at Franklin Community, they're coached by and Adam Reese, who's in his first year in this uh, Mid State Conference. They're a 4A school. Uh, like I said, they're 5 and 3 on the year. Um, but what's impressive about them is the points per game that they're giving up, 18 points per game. So that'll be the thing to look at is this high-powered Decatur Central offense against this, uh, this, this very dominant um, up-front <clears throat> Franklin community defense. For, uh, we'll take a quick look at the keys to tonight's game. For Decatur offensively, this game is going to come down to Eli Conlon. If he can protect the football, unlike he did last week, and pound it against this tough Grizzly Cub defense, um, that'll be one of the major points, um, I'm sure, for this Decatur Central Hawk team coming out tonight. And then it'll be up to Tom, uh, quarterback Tommy Stevens. Once the uh, defense cheats in close to the line of scrimmage, it'll go a long way for the play action later on. Defensively, the Hawks are going to have to contain junior running back Ross Barr and also senior running back Phoenix Campos for this Grizzly Cub team. This Grizzly Cub offense does not pass the ball much. Um, the quarterback, David Steer, is only 15 of 45 this year. So defensively, you want to force this Grizzly Cub team to throw the ball, something they have not done well on a regular basis this year. To put that in perspective, um, the very first game that this Grizzly Cub team played against uh, Seymour, Franklin piled up an impressive 555 yards in the victory, but they didn't even complete a single pass during that game. So that's one of the more impressive things about this uh, Franklin Community Grizzly Cub team is their ability to run the ball and not have to throw to be able to win games. Um, obviously, a 5-3 and record, record is very impressive. They'll be facing Whiteland in the sectionals next week. Um, so it'll be a very interesting game tonight. Um, as the seniors continue to be honored, um, we talked a little bit about pairings already. Uh, the 41st annual Indiana High School Athletic Association State Football Tournament is less than two weeks away, and pairings were announced last Sunday night. Uh, Decatur will face Cathedral High School, and um, talking a little bit about that matchup, as, the, as of the 2011 senior, uh, season, excuse me, Cathedral still has the most wins in the state of Indiana with an overall record of 671 to 263. Cathedral ranks third on all the all-time list for state finals appearances in Indiana, reaching the title game a total of 13 times, and they've emerged victorious in 10 of those 12 appearances. 
including a school history making three-peat of state championship titles in 2010, 2011, and 2012. So with that tournament looming, um, it'll be very interesting to see how uh, Decatur Central can come out tonight to handle their float when they know that they have a cathedral in the waiting wings. So we'll take a quick break as we uh, get set to reset the scene for you and also have the anthem. Uh, we'll be back. This is the Audio Sports Online pregame show at Decatur Central High School. He's played football and wrestled in high school. His accomplishments have been getting strong in the weight room, getting on the boards for several of the power clubs. He will continue playing football in college, where he study, will study engineering. Leroy Skelton. And now for our football majors. First, we have Katie Cornelius. Welcome back to the Audio Sports Online pregame show. As we said, it is senior night, and a lot of the seniors are getting honored tonight in numerical order on the um, the track. As you see, uh, most of the seniors uh, being uh, honored tonight do have family members down there on the field with them um, to share in the uh, honor of being a uh, you know a letter letterman and uh, varsity player for this Decatur Central football team. As they continue to do that, let's take a quick look at the starting lineups for tonight's game. For the Decatur Central offense, their offensive line will be pretty much the same as it has been all year. Lucas McNeil will be a big front on that left side. He's a 6'7", 272 senior. Um, he's been a big-time college prospect thus far this season. Um, I know he's visited Ball State as well as a couple of... Uh, a couple of other schools have also shown interest in him, including uh, Northern in, uh, Illinois and also IU. So it'll be interesting as he moves forward, seeing what kind of offers he gets and where he decides to go. Also joining him on that left side is John Day, the senior, 6'1", 235. Holding down the middle will be Luke Gregory, 6'4", 285, junior. John Sidwell will be playing right guard, a 5'11", 201-pound uh, sophomore. And then on the far right side, Austin Osborne, a 6'3", 240-pound junior. Under center will be Tommy Stevens, the quarterback for this Decatur Central Hawk team. He uh, 6'4", 190 junior. Uh, he's been passing the ball with a much more frequency lately. Um, he has 76 uh, completions on the air out of 141 attempts and also 1,244 yards thus far on the season as well as 12 touchdowns and only three interceptions. Riker Stout will make his main go-to target on the right side, a six foot, 171 junior. He has 36 receptions on the year with, with 534 yards as well as seven touchdowns. Aaron Sandy will also be the other wide receiver on the outside. He's a six one, 187 pound senior. He has 16 receptions thus far on the year. And occasionally also you'll see Connor Ray in the slot for the Decatur Central offense. He's a six foot, 150 pound junior. But the main workhorse for the Decatur Central office continues to be Eli Collin. He is a 180-pound, 5'10 senior. Uh, he has over 1,350 rushing yards thus far on the year, as well as 17 touchdowns. And he's been uh, getting yards per game at an impressive clip, almost 9 yards per attempt and 175 per game. But he did have those two fumbles last week against Ron Colley, so it will be interesting to see how he comes out here tonight. And then also getting time in that little bit of a wishbone that the uh, Decatur Central Hawks like to run will be Cameron Evans, a 5'11", 215-pound senior, and Dakota Sidwell, a 5'10", 185 junior. Defensively for the Hawks, um, that defensive front uh, is a 3-4. Uh, Lucas McNeil will get time on that line, as well as Dean Thomas, a 6'2", 211-pound senior at the nose tackle spot. John Day will also uh, be getting dual time. at six. He's a 6'2", 235-pound senior on the other defensive end spot. The four linebackers in this linebacker core will be Zach Munis, the leading tackler on this Hawks team. He's a 5'8", 185-pound senior. He, has, he thus far has 82 tackles on the season. In the inside slot will be John Sidwell, a 5'11", 201-pound junior, and also Brian Wells, a 165, 5'8", junior. And then on the far other side, Cameron Evans will uh, also be sharing time. As uh, a lot of these players do play both ways of the ball, as does Cam as Cameron Evan does. He's a 5'11", 215 senior. He has 48 tackles as well as an impressive three sacks thus far on the year. Um, Dakota Sidwell, James Harris, and David Newkirk will also see time in that linebacker core. And then in the secondary for this Decatur defense will be uh, Devin Toms, a 5'8", 155 senior. He'll be playing the left cornerback position. And he does have one interception on the year as well as one touchdown and a forced fumble. And then at the strong safety spot will be Jack Weldon, a 6 foot 190 senior. He has 71 tackles on the year as well as three sacks, three forced fumbles, two interceptions, and two blocked field goals. So he's definitely the big-time playmaker in that secondary for this Hawks team. And then free safety 
Cameron Evans will slide back there occasionally, um, but he'll also be splitting time back there with James Harris, a six foot two, 182 pound junior. And then on the right cornerback position, Jalen Miller, a 5'10", 175 pound senior, will also be back there in that secondary. And then the occasional nickel package, you'll see TJ Helm come out. He's a 5'11", 160 pound senior. For this Franklin community offense, <clears throat> um, their offensive line looks a little bit like this. From left to right, Phil Indus, a 5'11", 180-pound senior. Kyle Woodard, a 220-pound 5'9", senior. And also Cole Edwards at the center position, 6'1", senior. And right guard, Justin Tucker, 6'2", 240-pound junior. And then Tyler Hendricks, a 6'2", 185-pound junior, will complete that offensive front for the Grizzly Cubs. Under center will be David Steer, a six foot one, one ninety pound junior. As we talked about earlier, not very keen with throwing the ball as he's only fifteen to forty five thus far on the season. His main go to targets on the outside will be Damon Munn and Nick Young, uh, but he'll also find in that rotation Kevin Sipes and occasionally Joe Stevenson. The main go to threat from behind uh, behind uh, Steer as the halfback Rose Barr. Uh, six foot, 215 junior, has 163 rushing attempts for 1,130 yards on the season, plus 10 touchdowns. He's uh, averaging about seven yards per carry and 141 per game. Phoenix Campos will uh, line up behind the steer occasionally, but he'll also line up in the slot. He's a five foot six, 145 pound senior. And then Chad Williams and Jake Stevenson will also see times carrying the ball. For this Franklin Community uh, Grizzly Cup defense, we talked a little bit about how stingy they've been thus far in the year. Uh, allowing uh, opponents, holding opponents only 18 points per game. They're uh, a 4-3 defense. They'll line up like this on that defensive front. Alex Clayton, a 5'8", 190-pound senior, to uh, Connor Tully, a 6'1", 225-pound senior. And then the other defensive tackle will be Nick Welsh, a 6'3", 210 junior. And then the far right side will be Austin Ramsey, a 5'9", 210-pound senior. For the linebacker core for this Grizzly Cub defense, from left to right, it'll be Jacob Stevenson, Jason Moran, and Michael Patrol uh, manning that middle. And then, of course, in the secondary, Dakota Warwick, Matthew Warwick, Chad, uh, Michael Chadbourne, and Nick Young will be in that secondary. Their punt returner, should be noted, is Mark Nally. He, uh, he's definitely a dangerous one. He does have one touchdown already on the year against Howe. We'll take a quick break as we step away for the national anthem. National anthem performed right there by the Decatur Central Marching Band. Um, as we talked about already, uh, reset the scene for you a little bit tonight. Um, it is senior night here at DeVere Field Stadium as the seniors were honored for, for the game uh, for this Decatur Central Hawk team. Um, and as we talked about also with the weather, it will be a little bit of a cold one. Um, temperatures dropping down probably to one of the lowest points that they have thus far of the fall season. Uh, it will be a chilly 58 degrees here by the start of the kick. Um, so we'll see how the attendance is for both sides. As we look across the way, um, 
not too many people for Franklin Community. It's a little bit of a drive, um, but it will be interesting to see if more of them file in. Uh, as this Franklin Community team has been had an impressive season thus far, and then of course for the Decatur Central Hawks on their side uh, is a whiteout. So it'll be very interesting seeing how this uh, te- both these teams and fans base react to the cold weather um, as we get set for tonight. <clears throat> We talked a little bit about the keys of the game, um, and I, I spoke of how this Franklin community offense is so dangerous I and mean, how they can rack up the yardage without even having to complete a pass. Um, so it would be very interesting seeing how they do um, and how this Decatur Central Hawk team comes out defensively to try and slow down that rushing attack and try and force Steer to uh, throw the ball. So that will be something to keep an eye on as this game gets started and continues on down the way. Gator Central is about to start taking the field. Uh, the tunnel is all set up. So, <clears throat> one of the seniors that were honored before, was honored before the game was Abdi So. He uh, has not completed a field goal this far, but he is a uh, soccer uh, letterman, captain of the soccer team here at Decatur Central High School. He is 22 of 24 on uh, point after touchdowns thus far on the year. Uh, and then his uh, his ad, his. Uh, not necessarily adversary, but his counterpart, if you will, uh, Patrick Palmer for the Grizzly Cubs, is 27-29 on play, uh, points after touchdowns thus far, as well as 8 of 9 on field goals, and he does have one successful onside kick. So uh, both of them will be uh, players to watch in the special teams category uh, for both these teams. We talked a little bit about Mark Nally, who does the uh, returns for this Franklin community team. Uh, for the Decatur Central Hawks, TJ Helm and Jalen Miller, who normally are in the secondary for this Decatur Central defense, will also be the return men uh, for this uh, for this game as well as they have been for the uh, most of the season. As we get set for the coin flip. The Decatur Central now taking the field. They'll be wearing their blue jerseys with the white pants and gold helmets, as well as gold lettering. Franklin Community will be wearing their away blues with the blue pants and blue lettering and white helmets. We spoke of it. Decatur Central, while they made sectionals, they, uh, this will be the considered the last home game. That's one of the reasons why it was senior night here tonight. Most of the student section here is wearing all white, as we expected with the white out. Should be interesting going forward as uh, first year coach Adam Reese for the Franklin Community Grizzly Cubs has his team playing so good. Um, we'll be interesting seeing how the uh, talk about the overall record being in favor of the Hawks, 6 1 all time, but. This, I feel, is a uh, Franklin community team that's on the rise. Um, I did have the privilege of seeing them play against Plainfield earlier this season. Um, they were very impressive in the 20-point in the victory. Um, the defense was just, they, they're a swarming defense. Um, uh, they do a really good job running to the ball, and then uh, they have a great um, aptitude, if you will, for trying to get takeaways. Uh, so it should be interesting seeing how the Hawks, had, her turnovers were a problem against Ron Colley last week, see how they react to that. Lucas McNeil, as well as Cameron Evans, and also the, uh, Jack Weldon going out for the coin toss for the Cater Central Hawks. David Steer, as well as Matthew Warwick, and Ross Barr, and also going out is Jason Moran for the Grizzly Cubs as they get set for the coin flip. Looks like the Decatur Central Hawks will be defending the south side of the field, and Franklin Community will be defending the north side. So we'll get set for kickoff.
as it looks like Franklin Community won the toss and elected to receive. So Abdi So will be kicking off to Mark Nally, who goes back deep to return, as well as believe that it is Chad Williams also back deep. Check that. Yes, that is Chad Williams. So we'll be kicking from the 40. He kicks. And there are whistles already on the field as it was fielded at about the 15. Have to wait and see what the official call is. And it will be re-kicked. Technically, it would have been a penalty if any of the Franklin community, or excuse me, any of the Decatur Central players crossed the line of where the football is kicked before. So kicks it. I don't believe that was the call. I have to wait. I'm not sure what the official call is. But either way, they'll re-kick it. So So gets a second chance to try and pin this Franklin Community special teams deep and the kick is away Mark Nally comes up to it and actually it's taken by at the 20 it wasn't Mark Nally coming up for it it was number 34 Jacob Stevenson and he'll get ahead to about the 34 and that's where this Franklin Community offense will start Zach Muniz there on the tackle for the Decatur Central Hawks One receiver to the right, one to the left. Wishbone formation. Steer hands it off. Up the up ahead to Ross Barr, who just plows ahead against defenders up to about the 42. So he'll have a pickup of call it we'll call it seven. So that'll bring up second and three. Once again, one receiver wide to the right. Wishbone formation behind Steer. Gator Central, very close to the line of scrimmage. Handoff once again is, is faked up the middle of the Ross Bar. Fakes the pitch out, does Steer, and he'll plow ahead, and he'll get the first down and more all the way down to about the 40, uh, call it the 46 of the Gator Central into the Gator Central territory. So very good option out there by Steer. Steer once again about to go under center. Wide to the left is Damon Munn, as well as another receiver wide to the left. Once again, wishbone formation in a jumbo set. And off goes once again up the middle of the Ross Bar. Flag is down and the play is whistled dead. And it'll be a false start against the offense. So that'll push the Grizzly Cub team back five yards. So it'll be first and 15. From the Grizzly Cubs' own 46-yard line. One receiver to the right is Damon Munn, as well as Nick King in the slot. Once again, jumbo set formation with three running backs behind Steer. Steer hands off up the middle to Ross Barr, and he'll be slammed down once he gets a couple of yards. Tackle was made by... It'll be Zach Munis there on the tackle. It'll be second and 11. Two receivers to the right behind Steer. Pitch out goes to the left side, and ahead is Phoenix Campos, who gets one on the pitch out. Pitch number five, Phoenix Campos. So that'll be good for one down, and it'll bring out third and nine. It'll be third down for the Grizzly Cubs. Third 
So thus far, Decatur Central has a chance to get off the field. We'll see if they are able to do so after this play. So it'll be, call it third and nine. Two receivers go to the right, Damon Munn and Nick King. Once again, jumbo set. Behind Steer under center is Ross Barr. Steer fakes the handoff, looks downfield, and the receiver fell down, so no flag will be on the play. So um, that will end this uh, very short drive for this Franklin community offense. So I'll bring out fourth down and force this Grizzly Cup team to punt. Patrick Palmer is the punter for this team. Back deep to return is T.J. Helm. They fake it, and it's a run. And going across the close to the marker, I believe he got it, was number 29, Chad Williams. So the fake worked. We'll see exactly where they spot it. It might be just short. Referee's huddling and about to spot it. And they will measure it by bringing out the chains. It was very close. Um, it looked like it might have been just short initially. We'll see exactly where the chains are spotting. As the chain gang comes out on the field. Was a very good trick play by the uh, Grizzly Cubs. Executed very well. We'll see if they get that first down. And it will be short, so Decatur Central will take over possession at about the... See exactly where they spot it, but Decatur Central will take it over at about their own, call it 38-yard call it line. See exactly where they spot it. Okay, it'll be at the 36. So it'll be first and 10 on Decatur Central's own 36. And that's where Tommy Stevens will start the possession for the, uh, the Decatur Central Hawks. Cameron Evans as well has Eli Conlon behind him under center. One wide receiver out to the right is Riker Stout. And in the left slot is Aaron Sandy. Motion man is Dakota Sidwell from right to left. Handoff goes to Conlon up the middle. He looks to plow ahead. Still plowing over defenders. And good first, run, uh, first down run there by Conlon. Picks up about eight. So it'll be second and two at close to the 45-yard line of Decatur Central. Second and two, ball on the 44-yard line. 8.31 left to go in this first quarter. 0-0 tie. Stevens under center. Once again, two receivers to either side. Conlon behind Stevens. Motion man is Dakota Sidwell. Stevens fakes the handoff, and he looks to plow ahead himself. Picks up all the way down to about the 42-yard line into Franklin Community Territory before he's pushed out. So very good carry there by Tommy Stevens. Called a gain of 18 for Tommy Stevens. First and 10 in Franklin Community Territory. Tommy Stevens once again under center. One receiver to the left and Aaron Sandy. One out wide is Riker Stout. Dakota Sidwell also on the right side. He'll be the blocker as Aaron Sandy gets it on the quick, uh, quick screen play. And he'll get about eight on that reception for Tommy Stevens' first completed pass. So that'll be a gainer of eight on the first completion for Stevens. So it'll be second and three. One receiver goes wide to the left. That is Matt Canavan. Handoff is up the middle to... Dakota Sidwell spinning ahead to cross the first down marker about to the 29-yard line before he's brought down. So that'll be good enough for a first down. Dakota Sidwell with the carry. 
So that'll be good for about a six, call it five yard gain for Dakota Sidwell. And that'll be good enough for the first down. So Decatur, Decatur Central uh, moving the ball very well here. One receiver wide to the left, one wide to the right. Cameron Evans, as well as Dakota Sidwell, also back there behind Conlon. Handoff goes up the middle to De Sidwell. He's got room to run. Daylight gets to the 10, the 5, and he'll be into the end zone for the touchdown from about the 31-yard line. So 31-yard run there by Dakota Sidwell for the touchdown. So that'll make, uh, put the Hawks on the board first as they have six points here early. Great run there by Dakota Sudwell, finding the opening and then just spinning ahead and plowing to the green light all the way to the touchdown. We'll see if the Hawks decide to go for two, something they frequently do. Did a lot more earlier in the season than they has of late, but they looks like they will go for two here. So Tommy Stevens in a jumble set, one receiver to the right, Conlon behind Stevens, and then behind him is Cameron Evans. Motion man's Dakota Sidwell from left to right. Plowing ahead is Cameron Evans, and he'll get in there, it looks like, for the two-point conversion. So just like that, the Hawks are ahead 8 nothing. So very quickly, the Hawks not only draw the first blood, but they also add to it as they convert the two-point conversion. We talked about last week how uh, it was imperative that the Hawks get out to an early lead because that's typically how they play at their best when they're running the ball. And getting ahead here early tonight is a good sign for this Hawks team. 6.36 left to go in the first quarter. The Hawks will come on to kick it off to the Grizzly Cubs. Going back deep to return is Mark Nally, as well as Chad Williams. Abdi So set to kick off from the 40. So set to put his foot into it and does. Coming up to get it is Chad Williams at about the 20-yard line. He's ahead to the 25, to the 30. Still plowing ahead, has daylight, making a man miss all the way down to about the 44 before he's finally brought down. Great return sets this Franklin Community Grizzly team in excellent field position at the start of this drive. So very good return there by Chad Williams, setting up this Grizzly Cub team in excellent field position to start this second drive of theirs. One receiver wide to the right. Jumbo formation on the left side for the Grizzly Cubs. Handoff goes ahead to Ross Barr, and there will be flags on that play. And it will be a false start. So once again, the second false start penalty for this Franklin Grizzly Cub defense will pin them into another long yard situation. It will be first and 15. So the ball will be replaced at the Franklin Community's own 39-yard line. It'll be first and 15. One receiver goes wide to the right. That is Damon Munn. Once again, jumbo formation of running backs behind Steer. Ross Barr mainly behind him. And the handoff is to Ross Barr. And he'll get plowed right, right there. Did not get another inch as Dean Thomas plowed through the line and leveled him for probably a loss of, call it, Two. So once again, backs up this Franklin Community Grizzly Cub. <clears throat> Wide to the right is Munn. 
And the handoff is live, has falling on it, and still ball is out. No one's able to wrap it up, but it will be Decatur Central ball. Is on the pitch out from Steer to his running back. It was bobbled by Phoenix Campos. So the ball will go back to the Decatur Central offense in very good field position. And on the recovery was Jacob Scotton, 5'10", 280-pound senior on that defensive line for the Franklin Community, uh, excuse me, the Decatur Central Hawks. So Tommy Stevens will go back out there, first and 10 on their own, uh, in, uh, on Franklin Community's 22-yard line. Two receivers either side for Stevens. Franklin Community showing blitz. Cameron Evans is the motion man. Pitch out goes to Cameron Evans. He hauls it in, and he'll be tackled for a loss as getting in there was number 17, Matthew Warwick, who really snuffed out that play and drove down Cameron Evans for the big loss. So it'll be second and call it 16 from the 28. So Cameron Evans loses six yards on that play. Had a run of two during the two-point conversion, so that puts him at negative four thus far on the day. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Riker Stout is the one wide to the right. Stevens hands off, fakes the handoff straight ahead, and spinning out of tackles and getting very good field position. Down to the 10 is Stevens as he faked out the defense. Faked out me. I thought he handed it off to Conlon, but he'll get down to about the 10-yard line, and that'll be enough for the move the chains. So great run there by Stevens, and that'll bring out first and goal from the eight yard line. <laughs> 15 yard run there by Stevens. He already has 33 yards on the day rushing. Handoff goes up the middle to Conlon. He'll be swallowed up after he gets one or two maybe on the play. Franklin Grizzly Cubs saying they have it. And Franklin Community does. So another fumble for Elon Conlon, who continues to struggle. That's his third turnover in two weeks. Conlon has been so sure-handed here uh, pretty much all season up until the last couple weeks, and that is another fumble for him. So it'll be first and 10 on the seven-yard line for Franklin Community as they uh, look to try and get back into this game. Damon Munn wide to the left. Nick King wide to the left. Steer, hands off, stay straight ahead. And that would be Chad Williams there on the carry. He'll get six before he's brought down. So it'll be second and four. Check that, they're going to spot it at eight. So he actually got eight on that carry. Tackle was made by Tommy Stevens. A lot of these Decatur Central Hawks will play both sides of the ball as we talked about. Damon Munn goes wide to the left. Nick King in the slot. Chad Williams is lined up under center. Handoff goes up the middle to Ross Barr. And he gets ahead initially. And then he got pushed back. Maybe got to the line of scrimmage. And that's exactly where he got, so it'll be a gain of nothing. And it'll be third and two. Jack Weldon there on the tackle for the Hawks. Steer once again goes under center. Two receivers to the right. Handoff goes once again to Ross Barr. He cuts it to the right side. Gets to about the 18 before he's brought down. Be very close to that first down marker. Looks like he got past it. So it'll be enough to move the chains. So two yards gets it done. And he has 10 rushing yards on five attempts thus far to his bar. So it'll be first and 10 on the 19 for Franklin Community. 2.58 left to go in the first quarter. Decatur Central leads here early, 8 nothing. 
Two receivers go to the left in Evan Sipes and Damon Munn. Ross Barr behind Steer. Handoff goes ahead to Ross Barr, and he'll be stuffed. Got absolutely nothing there on the carry as plowing ahead to get him was Jacob Scotton. And actually, it was fumbled and recovered by the Hawks by Jacob Scotton. So, three fumbles here early, and uh, Decatur Central will get the ball back, and it'll be first and 10 on about the 23 yard line. Fumbles so far being the, na the uh, name of the game thus far here in this game is Grizzly Cubs have two fumbles and the Hawks have one. Stevens under center. Behind him is Cameron Evans. Cameron Evans gets the handoff, plows ahead to the 20 yard line. Call it the 19 before he's brought down. Actually, he'll be just to the 19. So it'll be second and seven as he gets three on that carry. Does Evans? Three rushes for negative one yards thus far for Evans on the day. Second and seven. One receiver wide to the right is Riker Stout. Wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Stevens under center. Looks to pass. Looks for Sandy on the left side. Curls around and gets to about the 9, uh, excuse me, the 11 before he's brought down. Be close to the first down. We'll see exactly where they spot it and if they measure. Line judge talking with the head official and they'll call it a first down. So... It was second and seven, so it was a gain of three there on the reception to Sandy. He's got 11 receiving yards on the day. And flags come out. Didn't see what the call is. I was busy marking the stat sheet. and it'll be encroachment against the defense. So that'll be another penalty for the Grizzly Cubs. That'll be their third penalty on the day. Three penalties for 15 yards, thus four for the Grizzly Cubs. Stevens goes under center. Wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Wide to the right is Riker Stout. Handoff goes, is faked ahead to Conlon. Stevens still has it, still moving, still trying to evade tacklers, and He'll get to maybe the nine, maybe the eight before he's brought down. Tried to find some daylight and just didn't have the blockers ahead of him and just spun out of tacklers trying to find something. So it'll be second and call it five. So they're going to say he got back to the line of scrimmage. Check that. He actually lost a yard. So second and six on the seven. Stevens once again under center. Pitch out goes to Conlon to the right side. He'll get in there for the touchdown. Great blocking up front on the, on the right side as Conlon was able to walk it in there for the touchdown. So very, very quickly, it's 14 nothing. We'll see if they go for two. Stevens will go under center. Cameron Evans and Riker Stout both wide to the right. Conlin behind Stevens. Go to Sidwell, the motion man from left to right. And Stevens looks to pass. Looks right, doesn't find anything. Evades rushers, looking ahead into the back of the end zone and catching it for the two-point conversion is Dakota Sidwell. So Dakota Sidwell gets the two-point conversion. So 13 passing yards thus far on the day for Stevens as the Hawks take a 16 to nothing lead against Franklin Community who does not have much of a passing game. So we talked about during the pregame how imperative it was for this Decatur Central Hawk team to come out 
early and get ahead on the scoreboard and try and force this Grizzly Cubs team to pass, and that's exactly what they've done. Uh, with the two-point two, po two point conversion, it's 16 nothing with a minute 26 left to go in this first quarter. So so gets set to kick it off to Williams and McNally back deep to return. So puts his leg into it, a very high kick, very short. Coming up and letting it bounce is Chad Williams. He'll field it at about the 21, and he'll be brought down immediately. Good open field tackle there by number two, Jalen Jalen Miller. So very good coverage on the kickoff there by Miller, who's a uh, returner in his own right. So it'll be first and 10 on the 22-yard line for the Grizzly Cubs. Munn goes wide to the right, as well as Evan Sipes in the slot. Jumbo formation once again for the Grizzly Cubs. Faking the handoff. Ball's loose and on the ground, and the Cater Central Hawks have it. Steer looked to pitch it out, had nowhere to go, and getting the, the deep penetration there for the, on the play was Dean Thomas, and he'll get the forced fumble. I didn't see who got the recovery, but once again, the Grizzly Cubs with their third fumble on the game. Grizzly Cubs not looking sharp thus far offensively as they have given the ball up three times on three different fumbles. So Decatur Central will get the ball back once again. An excellent field position. They'll be first and ten on their own twenty on the Franklin Community twenty-two yard line. Stevens has one receiver wide to the left and Sandy wide to the right is Riker Stout under center. The Grizzly Club show blitz. Fakes the handoff to Kevin Evans. Cameron Evans looks to throw. Has his man Aaron Sandy in the corner of the end zone and right through his hands. Great pass there by Stevens. Not able to haul it in with Sandy. So that'll bring out second and ten. Sandy had that pass just right through his fingertips in that corner of the end zone. I thought it would be a little bit chillier than it is. It's actually been a relatively nice night. 16-0 for the Hawks here with a minute, fit, tw minute excuse, excuse, excuse me, a minute 12 left to go in the first quarter. Stevens under center. On the pitch out is Dakota Sidwell, tackler right there, and they swallow him up whole. So it'll be a loss of call it one. That's getting in there for the tackles. Number 34, Jacob Stevenson on that linebacker core. So it'll be a loss of one for Cameron, Ev or excuse me, Dakota Sidwell. He has 38 yards on the day thus far to Sidwell on four rushing attempts. So it'll be third and 11. Clock continues to roll close to the 30-second mark. Stevens under center. Looks to throw. Rolls to the right. Looks downfield. Looks, looks. Finds Dakota Sidwell, who has it and drops it after the hit. Great defensive pressure there on the hit and tackled and jar it loose. And that was number 17, Matthew Warwick, there on the hit. So back-to-back -back incompletions for Stevens. He is 3 of 5 thus far on the day, but both of those uh, incomplete passes were could have been catchable. So it'll be 4th and 11, and the Decatur Central Hawks will go for it in their in Franklin Community Territory. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Stevens under center. Conlon behind him. Motion man is Cameron Evans from left to right. Stevens rolls to the right, looking, looking, looks across his field. Trying to find something, still continuing to roll out, baiting tacklers and throwing it short of his intended target. So it'll be a turnover on downs. So it'll be first and 10 from the 23 yard line for the Grizzly Cubs. Three fumbles thus far on the day, so they need to try and get something going here before the end of the first uh, quarter. 15 seconds left to go in this first. You're listening to Audio Sports. Online.com coverage of Decatur Central Hawk foot, uh, High School Football. I'm J.P. Sinclair. 
Joining me tonight, um, not on commentary, but working the camera, is Kevin Scott. Big uh, appreciation for him helping to do, for, uh, helping us do this game. Steer rolling out, looking for his intended target in the middle of the field. That would be Ross Barr and not finding him on the reception. So it'll be an incomplete pass for Steer, his second incomplete pass of the day. So it'll be second and ten. Ten seconds left to go in the first quarter. Two receivers go wide to the left. That's Damon Munn and Evan Sipes. Once again, jumbo set behind Steer under center. Steer looks the hand off and does right up the middle to Ross Barr. He'll get one, maybe two on the play before he's brought down. Tackle looked like it was Lucas McNeil. Check that. They're going to get the tackle to Evan Muniz, and that'll end the first quarter. So it'll be third and ten on the 23-yard line after the no-gainer on that rushing attempt by Barr. So we'll take a quick step away and then come back for the second quarter. You're listening to AudioSportsOnline.com coverage of Decatur Central High School football. Welcome back. It'll be third and six, uh, call it third and eight, excuse me, for the Grizzly Cubs. Steer looks for his man and hands it off to Chad Williams. He's got nothing but green in front of him. 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, and he'll go all the way in for the touchdown. So beautiful open field run there by Chad Williams for the touchdown. Seventy-five yard gainer there by Chad Williams. And the kick is up and good by Patrick Palmer. So it'll be sixteen seven in favor of the Decatur Central Hawks. So the Grizzly Cubs answer very quickly here at the opening bell of the second quarter. So very quickly, the Grizzly Cubs strike back. And that Decatur Central Hawk lead, which was 16-0, is now 16-7. One play was all it took there for the big-time gainer from Cameron Evans, who has two rushes for 83 yards already on the day. 41-and-a-half average is not a bad average to have if you're running back. Ball will be placed on the right hash mark. Patrick Palmer's kick is away, straight ahead kick, and that one will go out of the end zone for a touchback. Patrick Palmer with the big time leg there, pushing the ball out of the end zone on the kickoff. So it'll be first and 10 on the 20 for the Decatur Central Hawks. 
So Tommy Stevens will come out under center. He has two receivers to the right. Slot man is Cameron Evans. Handoff goes up the middle to Conlon, and he'll be swallowed almost immediately after a one-yard gain. Check that, two-yard gain. Actually got four yards on the play. Vision is not what it used to be, I guess. So Tommy Stevens will go under center again. Wide to the right is Riker Stout. Wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Motion man is Cameron Evans. Handoff goes up the middle to Conlon, and it was actually a fake. Tommy Stevens had it, and he goes down. And a scrum underneath the uh, for the ball. Franklin Community says they have it. But the Decatur Central Hawks will retain possession. So the Decatur Central Hawks will evade the scare. Tommy Stevens who fumbles, who covers the fumble. So Stevens who fumbled it, but recovers it himself. So it'll be third and six from the 24 yard line. Stevens under center, looking to throw it quickly and has his man right there for the first down is Riker Stout. Actually, that'll be closer to the first down marker, but it will be good enough for a first down. So, that'll be good enough for the first down. Call it a seven yard reception there. So it'll be first and 10 on the 32 yard line. Stevens once again goes under center. Riker style wide to the right, wide to the left is Sandy. Stevens looks to throw again, looking downfield, has pressure, evades it, rolls to the left, and still on his feet, and still going on his feet. Beautiful evasion of the tackle, still going. There is a flag down on the field. Stevens still plows ahead for a seven-yard gain. We'll see exactly what the flag is. Stevens looked to be down, but refused to let his knee touch the crown. It will be a hold on the Hawks, so that'll actually push them back. But a great run, nevertheless, there by Tommy Stevens, evading the tackles. So that'll wipe out the big gainer. It's the first penalty of the day for the Decatur Central Hawks. So the 10-yard penalty will push them back, so it'll be first and 20. Nine forty-four left to go in the second quarter. Stevens looks to go under center again. Right out wide to the right, wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Motion man is Cameron Evans. Handoff is faked and goes on the in around to St uh, Dakota Sidwell, who's tackled immediately in the backfield by Jason Moran for a loss of call it two. So it'll be second and very long now for the Hawks. Second and 27 to be exact. Not too many plays in the playbook for second and 27. But we'll see exactly what they do here. Riker Stout goes wide to the left. Wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Kevin Evans, Cameron Evans lines up in the slot. Stevens looking to throw. Fakes it. Looks down the field. Not finding anything. Looks to run it himself. And he'll get ahead for a call it two before he's brought down. He has four rushes on the day for 34 yards. That's Stevens. Would have had more, but the holding penalty wiped that out. So 
So third and 25 now for the Hawks. Three, three receiver set, Stevens looking to throw, rolls to the left, finding his man on the curl route was Aaron Sandy, but that's all he'll get. He'll get close to the original line of scrimmage, but check that the reception was there by Connor Ray. So it'll be fourth and 13 and false start on the far right side on the punting is Aaron Sandy. Check that, that's Connor Ray. So another penalty for the Hawks will push him back even further on the punt. So Tommy Stevens on to punt. Back deep to return is Nally. Punt is up, and it'll be fielded at the 45 by Nally. Catches it on the run, and he'll plow ahead to the 42, uh, call it the 46-yard line. So it'll be first and 10 in Decatur Central Territory after the nice punt return. So Franklin Community will take possession of it. First and 10 on their own 30, uh, on Decatur Central's 38-yard line. Steer, hands off to Barr, right ahead. Oh, check that, he faked the handoff and he'll be wrapped up in the backfield for a loss. So getting the sack was, I believe that was Cameron Evans. Check that, that was actually Jack Weldon. Jack Weldon on the coverage for the Hawks. So it'll be a loss of two. So it'll be second and 11. Steer under center, two receivers to the right. Handoff goes once again ahead by Barr and he'll plow ahead, still plowing to about the 38. Call it 39 yard line. Zach Munis there on the tackle for the Hawks and it'll be third and seven. So a four yard run there by Barr. He has seven rushes for 14 yards. Faking the handoff is Steer and he'll plow ahead to the right and he won't get much. He'll be hit almost immediately after getting two yards. So it'll be fourth down and Probably Franklin Community might punt it here. We'll see exactly what they do after the two-yard gain there by Steer. And it looks like they will go for it. Steer under center. Two receivers to the right. Motion man is Chad Williams. Check that. Now Phoenix Cambos in motion. He'll get on the pitch out and sniffing it out all the way and bringing it down for a loss in the backfield is Cameron Evans. Cameron Evans just plowed ahead and found Phoenix Campos, and that'll be a loss of one and a turnover on down. So Decatur Central will get it after the big uh, big play there uh, by Cameron Evans. So back and forth game, we've seen a couple of turnover on downs as well as a couple of fumbles from both of these teams. Decatur Central leads 16-7 with 5-12 left to go in the second quarter. So it'll be first and 10 from the 36 of Decatur Central. High formation, two receivers either side. Stevens hands off up the middle to Conlon. He'll plow ahead to about the 39, call it the 40. So that'll be a, a four-yard gainer for Conlon. So 
So he has four rushes for 22 yards on the day, does Conlon. So it'll be second and six. Clock continues to roll. Stevens once again goes under center. I formation, two receivers either side. Handoff goes to Dakota Sidwell. Cuts back to the left side. Plows ahead to uh, pass the defender, and he'll have the ga big gain there. Call an eight-yard gain for Dakota Sidwell to move the chains. Six carries for 43 yards for Sidwell. First and 10. Stevens goes under center once again. I formation, two receivers either side. Fakes the handoff to Sidwell, rolls to the right, looking for Stryker Stout, and it's broken up. Great defensive play there by Nick King on the coverage. So that'll be second and 10 after the no gainer. Do apologize if I'm uh, out of it just a little bit. I'm uh, trying to keep my own stats for the first time. So doing my best here. So Tommy Stevens, he'll be second and 10 on the 48 yard line of Decatur Central. Two receivers either side, Stevens under center, motion man is Cameron Evans. He'll hand it off to Conlon up the middle for a, looks like a five yard gain. So the ball will be placed on the 52 yard line. So it'll be a gain of actually just four for Conlon. He has five rushes for 26 yards thus far on the day. Does Conlon? Does have the one fumble though as well. Three fifty one left to go in the second quarter. Hawks the lead. 16 to 7. One receiver wide to the right is Riker Stout. One to the left is, I believe, Connor Ray. Bunch formation behind Stevens under center. Stevens hands off. Cameron Evans up the middle. Plows ahead after a one big time hit on a defender, and he'll get ahead to about the 40, call it the 39 yard line. So very quickly now, Stevens once again goes under center. Handoff once again goes to Dakota Sidwell, and he'll plow ahead for a gain of, call it three. So second and eight. 2.57 left to go in the first, second quarter. Stevens goes under center. Wide to the right is Riker Stout. Wide to the left is Connor Ray. Stevens looks, trying to find on the screen Cameron Evans, but the pass is no good. So it'll be third down. So far, Stevens is five of 10 thus far on the day. So it'll be third and eight. Stevens goes under center, has wide one wide receiver, wide to the right, and Riker Stout. Wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Motion man is Cameron Evans. Handoff goes up, up ahead to Conlon, and he'll get close to the first down marker. See exactly where they spot it. If he does get it, that'll be a gain of eight. And it'll be first, he did not get it, so it'll be fourth and one. So it was actually just a gain of seven. So the Hawks will take their first timeout of this first half. Take a quick timeout as well so I can calculate some stats and then we'll bring you the rest of the second quarter.
So it'll be fourth and one. 16 and uh, 16 to seven is the score. 2:22 left to go in the second quarter. Tommy Stevens once again under center. Dakota Sidwell goes in motion from left to right. Handoff goes straight ahead to Conlin, and it looks like he'll have enough for the first down. Franklin Community thinks that they've stopped them. We'll see exactly where they spot it. I thought he got at least two on that play. It'll be very close, but they will mark it as a first down. So, well, actually, just one yard, but that's all he needed was the uh, rusher there by Conlin. He has seven rushes for 34 yards on the day. Wide to the right is Riker Stout. Wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Dakota Sidwell in the slot. Cameron Evans, motion man from left to right. Stevens goes under center. Conlon behind him. Conlon gets it on the handoff, and he'll plow ahead and get, call it, four on the carry. So check that. They're only going to give him three, so it'll be second and seven. Riker Stout wide to the right. Aaron Sandy wide to the left. Stevens once again under center in a wishbone type formation. Stevens fakes the handoff. Now pitching it out to Cameron Evans. He'll get ahead and pass the first down marker it looks like. Officials, nope, it'll be a yard short. So it'll be third and one after the six yard gain there by Evans. Number 22, Cameron Evans. On the tackle, number 76, Jacob Rampey. So it'll be third and two from the 22-yard line of Franklin Community. One minute left to go. Clock's still ticking. Two receivers wide to the left, one to the right. Stevens under center. Stevens looks, not finding anything. Rolls out to the left, still looking downfield, not finding anything. He's going to have to make a move with it. Goes downfield on his own, and he'll plow ahead. He'll get the first down, but the clock is still going. And Decatur Central looks like we'll call a timeout to stop the clock after the... Five yard gain by Tommy Stevens. He, Tommy Stevens has five rushes for 39 yards on the day. Check that. There was no timeout called. So Stevens will get it once again. Finds Dakota Sidwell on the handoff. He plows ahead and he'll get, it looks like, seven before he's brought down. So Decatur Central will take their second timeout. They'll have one remaining. After the six yard gain there by Dakota Sidwell. So Decatur Central trying to add to their lead before the half. We'll also have scores from around the state during halftime, our halftime show. You're listening to AudioSportsOnline.com coverage of Decatur Central High School. It's our pleasure to be here with you. I'm J.P. Sinclair along with my cameraman, Kevin Scott. Also thanks to uh, Kelly Williams, the AD here at Decatur Central for having us. During that halftime, besides the scores, we'll uh, have a recap and I'll tally up the uh, unofficial stats I have thus far in the first half. And we'll also talk about the second half adjustments needed to make by both teams. 31 seconds left to go before the half. One receiver either side for Tommy Stevens. He'll go under center with Conlon behind him. Dakota Sidwell is tight into the right. Cameron Evans tight to the left. Evans, the motion man. Handoff goes up the middle to Conlon. He'll plow ahead for one, two, maybe three as he continues to churn his feet. Coming up a little slow. Uh, his number's not on the roster, so I'm not really too sure who it was. It was number 85, it looked like, coming up a little bit slow, but looks like he will stay in there as the Cater Central takes their last time out. So 
So it looks like Conlon got three. So he has nine rushes for 40 yards thus far on the day. Always trying to get better for you folks listening in at home. I'm trying to add stats to my repertoire. When I used to do these games in colleges, I was spoiled with live stats. Don't have that anymore, so I'm working on trying to uh, better the broadcast for you guys at home. Two receivers go to the left, none to the right. Stevens under center. 24 seconds left to go before the half. Dakota Sidwell, the motion man. Stevens hands off to Conlon. Conlon plowing ahead. He'll get close to that first down marker, and it will get it for the first down, so call it a gain of four for Conlon. And that'll be first and goal at the four-yard line. Check that, the five-yard line. Stevens will stop the clock by spiking it. So it'll be second and call it five. Fifteen seconds left to go before the half. Guess is the Hawks, without any timeouts, will try and run one more play before they have to spiking it and let So try the, try the field goal. He has not tried a field goal all year, so it'll be interesting to see what exactly head coach Justin Dixon elects to do. One receiver goes wide to the right in a jumbo set, eye formation, Stevens under center. Handoff is fake, Cameron Evans. Stevens looks downfield, not finding anything. He has pressure, and he'll be brought down hard in the backfield. Great tackle there by Nally for the sack, and that'll do it for the first half. I doubt they'll get another play. Oh, they will spike it. Nope, did not get the spike in time. So that'll be the end of the half after the very quick sack there to bring down Stevens in the backfield. So we'll take a quick break and then uh, bring back, bring it back to you for the halftime show. You're listening to AudioSportsOnline.com coverage of Decatur Central High School football.
Road majors with Quincy Adams, Kirk Smith, Bailey Bradshaw, and Sam Merkley. Is your band ready?
Welcome back to Devere Fair Stadium at the campus of the Decatur Central High School. I am J.P. Sinclair, um, along with Kevin Scott working the camera, and uh, this is the halftime show. Uh, taking a look at a uh, little bit of a recap of that first half. Um, fumbles from both teams really led the uh, the field um, position play, if you will. Um, as Decatur Central got it very, very in a very nice field position a couple times after a couple fumbles from this Grizzly Cubs team. The Grizzly Cubs did have three fumbles in that first half, which really set the Decatur Central Hawks up really nicely in scoring position. Um, and they got uh, two two uh, touchdowns off of those turnovers and also scored on two two-point conversions. Um, the Grizzly Cubs had a uh, touchdown later, um, and they, had, uh, they just elected to go for the uh, PAT. And that's how we got our score, 16-7, after that first half. Take a quick look at the stats. For the Grizzly Cubs, Steer was 0 of 2 on passing attempts. Um, none of So they don't have receptions thus far on the game. We talked about how their first game against Seymour, they had 555 total yards of offense without a single, uh, without a single uh, pass attempted. So um, this is a team that definitely can get it done on the ground. Um, we also, uh, but rushing the ball is what they're known for. Barr has seven rushing attempts for 14 yards, and all these stats aren't official. This is just me doing my best to keep track of it. And um, but um, <clears throat> Campos has two rushing yards for one, uh, two rushing attempts for one yard, and um, Williams has two rushing attempts for 63 yards. He he was the big gainer that scored the uh, touchdown. Uh, check that. Yeah, it's 83 yards. That was a big time gainer there by Williams, which is what scored the touchdown on the breakaway rush. Um, Steer himself, the quarterback, has rushed three times for 14 yards. They also did have three penalties in that first quarter of play. Uh, all of them false starts for five yards. So they had 15 total yards um, of penalties, did the Grizzly Cubs in the first half, as well as those three fumbles. For the Decatur Central Hawks, uh, Conlon had a fumble as well as uh, Stevens. Um, Stevens was able to recover his, but Conlon lost his. Uh, Stevens is 5 of 10 thus far on the day, throwing the ball uh, for 59 yards. Um, his intended targets have been Riker Stout, who has 7, Sandy, who has 11 uh, yards, and Connor Ray, who has 13 yards on receptions. Conlon has rushed the ball 11 times for 42 yards on the ground. Um, he averages close to 175 per game, so he's definitely been held well below his average thus far today. Evans has five rushes for 12 yards. Sit, Dakota Sidwell has been the uh, the main workhorse uh, on the ground for this uh, the Cater Central Hawk team. He has eight rushes for 52 yards, and of course Stevens himself has uh, rushed five times for 39 yards. The Decatur Central Hawks did have two penalties. Um, they had one holding penalty and also one false start for a total of 15 yards of penalties on the first half. So those are the first half stats. Um, and then, of course, taking a look at what adjustments both these teams to make. I mean, if you're if you're Decatur Central at this point, uh, you have to be feeling good about the way you played. Obviously, um, you know, the... the Obviously, the you know the fumbles don't don't help in any way, shape, or form, and de- definitely want to cut. You know that's the third fumble by Conlon in the last two games, so that's something he's got to get a handle on as the uh, second half approaches. Um, but other than that, I mean, if you're the Hawks, you have to be feeling good. You've been able to get things done both through the air and on the ground, um, and really done just what you wanted to do. Um, you know coming out of the locker room to start this game. You've gotten the early lead. You've capitalized on any any opportunity, you know, this Franklin community team's given you. Um, so that's definitely something they want to continue doing here in the second half once uh, we get underway for the second half. I mean, for Franklin community, um, you don't pass the ball very well, so you have to continue to be um, – trying to think of the word. You have to continue to be – your identity. Their identity is rushing the ball and playing tough nose defense. So, I mean, if they can do their best to try and shut down this Decatur Central offense in the second half, slow down their rushing attack, possibly get in, you know, a takeaway or two, 
and then you come back and you're right back in the game. Just keep rushing the ball. You know, you're not down and out of it by any stretch of the imagination. It's only a nine point game, so we'll see how the um, the Cubs come out of the locker room. I just think they need to stay with what they 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 know it works for them, because um, this game is definitely not out of reach for them. Reset the scene for you. It is senior night, as you see uh, on the track on the camera feed right there. Um, I believe those are some of the cheerleaders and other seniors that are being honored um, thus far. Check that. That's actually the marching band the, that are being honored, the seniors in the marching band. Um, as we talked about earlier, it is senior night here at Decatur Central High School and wide out. So a lot of white in the stands for this Decatur Central um, fan base across the way. Um, a decent turnout for Franklin community. Obviously, it's a little bit of a drive up here, um, but still a good turnout as it continues to get a little bit colder. Uh, more and more sweatshirts and blankets coming out, but this is exactly what, to me, fall football should feel like. It's the exact right temperature. So there's about four minutes left to go before we get set to uh, kick off for the second half. We'll take a quick look at scores around the state. Pacers at Bulls has tipped. I'll try and keep appraised of that. I'm a huge Pacer fan, so definitely looking forward to keeping track of that game. <clears throat> so taking a look at some of the scores from around the state that we have in thus far. <clears throat> Columbus East is blanketing Bedford North Lawrence, 55-0 at the half. Beach Grove is down against LaPelle, 6-14 in the second quarter. East Noble leads Belmont 20-7 in the second. Carmel up big against Ben Davis, 24-7 in the second quarter. Carroll of Flora, 14-0 over North White in the second. In the second, South Putnam leads Cascade, 21-0. Cincinnati LaSalle of Ohio is leading Center Grove, 10-0 in the second. Angola is beating Central Noble, 14-6 in the second. Chittard leading Tech by only uh, less than the score, 6-0 at the half, so that's definitely a game to watch. <clears throat> Lakeland leads Churubusco 7-0 in the second. Warren Central over Cincinnati St. Xavier 14-0 in the second. Covington is yet to score against Riverton Park 0-6 in the first. North Central leads Dearborn of Michigan 14-0 in the second. All tied up is Delta and Shelbyville at 7 apiece in the second. Ron Colley, who the Decatur Central Hawks played last week, is up 9-0 against East Central in the first. East, East Chicago Central leads South Bend Adams 21 to 12 in the second. Eastbrook thus far pounding Frankton 49 nothing in the second quarter. Elwood leads Alexandria in a tight one 13 seven in the second. Brown Fishers and Brownsburg in a very close game. I know that is on one of our other channels. I know Lex Zorn has the call for you on that one. Fishers leads 20 to 14 in the second. Um, you can also check that game out on AudioSportsOnline.com as well. Frank Fort is leading Southmont 21-6 at the half. Terre Haute North is trailing Franklin Central 7-12 at the end of the first. Pendleton Heights and Greenfield Central, very close matchup, 7-6 in favor of Pendleton Heights in the second. Peru leads by just one against Hamilton Heights, 7-6 in the first. New Haven leads Homestead 26-13 in the second. Pike is thus far blanketing Lawrence Central, 13-0 in the second. Western leads Lewis Cass, 16-8 in the second. Martinsville thus far shutting out Plainfield, 7-0 in the second. Hamilton Southeastern leads McCutcheon, 28-7 at the half. All tied up is Mishawashka Merrigan and Elkhart Central in the first. New Palestine leads Mount Vernon of Fortville, 6-0 in the second. Heritage Christian up over Northwest, 21-2 in the second. Norwell leads Columbia City, 21-7 in the second. Perry Meridian thus far shutting out Bloomington South 45-0 in the second. Perry Meridian was the team that laid the 83 points on this Decatur Central team, but Decatur Central did score a big number themselves in 78. Rushville leads Greensburg 20-7 at the half. Tipton is blanketing Delphi 17-0 in the second. All tied up is Tri-Central and Sheridan at 20 apiece in the second. Tri-West leads Crawfordsville, 28-0 in the second. Speedway coming up short against Triton Central, 17-0 at the half. Attica leads Turkey Run, 20-0 in the first. Union City thus far blanketing Northeastern, 14-0 at the half. And West Lafayette leads Lafayette Central Catholic, 7-0 in the first. And Whiteland and Greenwood all tied up at 7 apiece at the half. And then Zionsville leads 
Avon 7 nothing at the half. So those are scores from around the state at the halftime. Take a very, very quick break, and then we'll get set for the second uh, half and the third quarter here momentarily. Of course, you just saw the moonshot by our cameraman, Kevin Scott, says the uh, the camera doesn't do it justice. It's a very uh, pretty full moon uh, dead ahead um, <clears throat> here at the Verifield Stadium. We get set for the second half. Um, Decatur Central leads 16 0. Uh, thus far, it's been a very good half for Decatur Central. Um, besides the two fumbles and a couple of penalties, you played a very good game of football and uh, just got to keep it up uh, in the second half. Uh, with the lead, it makes it easier to run the ball, um, and that'll definitely uh, help as this, this Franklin community team does not uh, typically throw the ball very well. So, um, definitely something to keep an eye on as we get set for the second half. Decatur Central uh, kicked off to start the game, so they'll get the ball to start the second half. It was a very solid first half uh, for Dakota Civil. Eight rushes for 52 yards. Um, that's something uh, I think they, the Hawks might look to go to a little bit more. Um, has Conlon uh, struggling to hold on to the ball the last couple of games as he had the one fumble in the first half and the two against Ron Colley. We'll see... Um, how much his Justin Dick, head coach Justin Dixon's faith has uh, been shaken with Conlon. Conlon's been a workhorse for this Decatur Central team. There's no 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 challenging that. Uh, just had a really rough go, rough go of it, and uh, with sectional play coming up, um, hopefully he can get that worked out. Maybe even here uh, to start the second half. So we'll see exactly uh, how him uh, Conlon and uh, head coach Justin Dixon um, look to uh, battle that in the second. T.J. Helm and Jalen Miller back deep to return for the Decatur Central Hawks. As getting ready to kick off is Patrick Palmer. Patrick Palmer once again puts a big solid leg on it. It's filled by T.J. Helm and it's in the end zone, so that'll be an automatic touchback. Tell you what, Palmer has got a leg on him. That's his second touchback on the day. So it'll be first and ten from the 20 for the Decatur Central Hawks. Wow. 
Wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Wide to the right is Riker Stout. Tommy Stevens under center. Conlon behind him. Franklin Community shows blitz. Cameron Evans, the motion man. Stevens hands off to Conlon. Up the middle. Makes a man miss. Makes another man miss. All the way down to the, call it the 36-yard line. So that'll be a gain of 16. Check that 17 on that for, uh, first down run there by Conlon. Stevens in the shotgun, looks to throw, looking, comes to Aaron Sandy on the left side, and that'll be good for a reception of, call it seven, maybe eight. Ball will be placed on the 45, so it'll be good for an eight-yard reception. Handoff goes up the middle to Conlon. He'll plow ahead and get past the first down marker. Gain of call it four on the carry by Conlon. So very quickly the Hawks come out throwing and also running the ball very efficiently. Stevens once again in the shotgun. Two receivers on either side. Stevens looks to the left, looking for Sandy, not finding him. Looks downfield now for Sandy, and it'll be an incomplete pass. Stevens faked to Sandy, who then curled out on a further route, but uh, they weren't able to hook up. So that'll bring out second and ten. Ball on the Decatur's own 49-yard line. Wide to the left is Connor, Way, Connor Ray, right? Wide to the right is Riker Stout. Tommy Stevens under center. Cameron Evans, the motion man. Handoff goes to Conlon up the middle. He has room to work. 40, 30, and he'll be tackled from behind by Jacob Stevenson after a big time gain. And he'll get all the way down to call it the 24 yard line. In between the 24 and the 25. So it'll be first and 10 after the 27-yard run by Conlon. Just like that, Conlon has 98 yards on the day. Handoff this time goes to Dakota Sidwell. He'll cut it to the left side. Looks to make a man miss and gets to about the call it the 11-yard line before he's brought down. Jacob Stevenson once again on the tackle. So we'll call it again a seven, so it'll be second and three. And off this time goes to Cameron Evans. Makes a man miss and plows ahead to about the 11-yard line. So a six-yard gain from Cameron Evans. So this stable of running backs for the Decatur Central Hawks, just in solid rotation, you know, big plays from Evans, Sidwell, and Conlon all back to back to back. Stout goes wide to the right, wide to the left is Connor Ray. Stevens under center once again. Motion man is Dakota Sidwell. Stevens hands off to Conlon. Conlon looks to the left side. Great block on the left side. Frees Conlon in for the tackle. Cameron Evans with a huge block on the left side to free Conlon. And he'll take a bow for, to the crowd after that solid block. So an 11 yard rush by Conlon. And they'll go for the two point conversion again. So lucked and go for two again as the score is 22-7. Said well the motion man. Evans under, or excuse me, Stevens under center. Hands off to Evans up the middle. 
he'll be close. I'm not sure he quite got there. And the official signal, no good. So he was short and will not get in from the three. So the score will be 22 to seven. 9.26 left to go in the third quarter. But the damage has been done as Decatur Central came out of the locker room with a purpose and put the points up on the board. And really, every single offensive you know, personnel of the Decatur Central team got into it. You had the big block by Evans on that scoring drive, huge runs by Conlon and uh, Dakota Sidwell, and even Tommy, uh, excuse me, Cameron Evans had a couple of good runs himself on that drive, as well as the uh, long pass to Sandy on that one. So, Going back deep to return is Mark Nally and Chad Williams for Franklin Community. Temperature continues to dip a little bit more and more as the game continues on. Very high, very short kick there by So, and that'll be fielded at about the 24, and that'll be about, he'll get ahead for maybe four or five, does Chad Williams before he's brought down. So once again, So's kicks have been very high, but very short. And uh, But the coverage has been excellent so far, as they haven't really uh, had much room to work with on the uh, returns, has Franklin Community. So it'll be first and 10 on the 27 yard line for the Grizzly Cubs. Steer goes under center, he has two receivers on either side. Motion man is Campos, handoff goes up the middle to bar and he got maybe one on the uh, forward progress. See exactly where they spot it. I'm going to say lost one on that play to Barr. So, I mean, he's only had eight rushes for 13 yards, and we're talking about a guy who came into this game with 141 rushing yards per game. So Decatur Central is really keyed in on him tonight. On the end of round is Steve, uh, excuse me, Chad Williams. Uh, he'll get two on the carry, maybe. Check that. Yeah, he got two on the carry, so it'll be third and nine. Williams on the carry. Chad, uh, excuse me, Chad Williams was the, the he had the 83 yard big time gainer in the uh, first half, so he has three rushes for 85 yards. So it's third and call it eight on the 29 yard line. Steer under center, looks, he's got pressure right in the middle from Jack Weldon, but gets the ball out and get plowing ahead for the first down is Ross Barr. So he'll get. At least eight, call it nine on the reception. That's their first complete pass of the day. But it's enough to move the first down, so it'll be first and ten on the 40-yard line. Two receivers either said in Munn and Sipes. Steer once again under center. On the pitch out is Campos. Campos looks to have cut it to the left side with room to work. Doesn't, gets maybe four, possibly five on the carry before he's brought down. On the pitch number five, Phoenix Campos with run. Call it four on the carry. On the tackle number 31, Austin Nelm. So second and six on the 44-yard line, 22 to seven lead, Decatur Central over Franklin Community, 7-16 left to go in the third quarter. Steer under center, motion man is Campos. He fakes the Campos, has pressure behind him, rolling out to the right and th under throwing his intended receiver in Chad Williams. He had pressure right away, uh, Lucas McNeil and also Dean Thompson there in his face on the rollout. So that'll go down as an incomplete pass and it'll bring out third down. Steer, once again under center. Two receivers on either side. 
Handoff is faked up the middle. Steer continues to have it himself, and he'll be swallowed up right there at the line of scrimmage. Whistles will blow the play dead. Uh, host of host of tacklers there for Decatur Central, among them John Sidwell, as well as uh, Tommy Stevens. So I'll bring out fourth down after the non-gainer on the rushing play by Steer. Patrick Palmer back to punt it for this Franklin community team. He's got the big leg. High snap. Palmer takes it and kicks it away. Going back to get it is TJ Helm. Check that. That's Riker Stout. Flag on the play for a block in the back. So that'll go against Decatur Central as Sandy got the, or excuse me, Stout got the ball to about the 39. We'll see exactly what the call is, but early indication there'll be a block in the back against Decatur. Not sure exactly I'm how many, uh, I think that's from the spot of the foul. So it wipes out the big gain. That's the Hawks' third penalty on the day, and that's where Tommy Stevens will take it to engineer this drive for the Hawks. First and 10 on the 20-yard line. Stevens hands off to Conlon. Check that. Stevens faked the handoff. He has it himself, and he'll be swallowed up after Tommy getting Stevens two. The on the for Franklin, Jason so Stevens has uh, 41 yards on six rushing attempts thus far on the day. Second and five. Check that, 44 yards. Gave him five on that play. One receiver wide to the left. One to the right for Stevens, under center. Conlon behind him, motion man is Cameron Evans. Handoff goes to Dakota Sidwell, the right side. He's got room to work with, 40. He gets to the 50, he's got one man to beat, 30. Still on his feet to the 20 before he's pushed out of bounds after finally Dakota Warwick uh, brings him down from behind. Huge gainer there by Dakota Sidwell. From the 25 all the way down to call it the 19. Call it 68 yards on the uh, big time run by Dakota Sidwell. He's got 127 on the day, does Dakota Sidwell. And the fumble, ball is on the ground after the snap and Franklin Community recovers. Was well, that Conlon again? So a change of possession. I'm not sure who the uh, fumble, uh, <clears throat> who fumbled it. I'm not sure if it was Tommy Stevens from the handoff or a running back, but either way, it'll be recovered by the Grizzly Cubs. So Steer will come back out under center. Campos the motion man, and he'll get on the pitch out to the left side. He has room to work with, gets across the 20, maybe to the 21 before he's brought down. Great open field tackle there by a J uh, Jalen Miller. So six yard gainer there by Campos on the pitch out. Second and four on the 21 yard line. One 
I guess one receiver to one left. It's such a it's such a tight formation. It's hard to really tell. But either way, Steer will fake the handoff and then hand it off to Campos, who has the first down and more across the 30 to the 31. So 10-yard gain there by Campos. So Franklin Community gets back-to-back -back first downs to move the chains. 4-13 left to go in the third quarter. Steer once again goes under center on the jumbo set. Pitch out goes to Williams, and he'll be hunt down in the backfield. Great open field tackling by Jack Weldon to bring Williams down way behind the first uh, behind the uh, line of scrimmage. So that'll bring it to second and call it 17. So a loss of seven there by Williams. So Steer will once again go under center. Steer fakes the handoff, throws a sidearm into to nobody across the middle of the field. That was not a pretty looking throw as he had pressure in his face from Jack Weldon. So that'll bring out third and call it 17 from the 24 yard line. Be interesting to see how Decatur Central lines up. You know you're not really expecting Franklin Community to throw the ball much. Evan Sipes goes to the left. Damon Munn wide to the right. Steer under center. Williams is the motion man. Steer looks downfield, airs it out, and almost picked off, but it'll be an incomplete pass. Defending that play was Tommy Stevens. Tommy Stevens on the coverage. So that'll bring out fourth and very long at 17. And Patrick Palmer on to punt it away. 317 left to go in the third quarter. Riker Stout at the 40 waiting to return. Punt is away. Stout will fill it at about the 40. Looks to cut to the left side. Gets to the 50, and he'll be tackled very quickly after cross crossing the 50 by number 37, Zach Dow, the 5'11", 185-pound sophomore. And Decatur Central will take over at their own, uh, excuse me, into Grizzly Cup territory at the 59. Excuse me, 49. There's no 59-yard line in football. <laughs> Tommy Stevens goes under center. <clears throat> Conlon, the man behind him. Stout and Sandy are the receivers either side. Handoff goes up the middle of Conlon, and he'll lose his footing and get ahead for maybe one before he's brought down. Tackle made by Michael Patrol, the 5'9", 180 senior. Not really sure if he even got a yard. It'll be very close. I'm going to say he got nothing. Line in the scrimmage. <clears throat> so Conlon losing his footing there. He has 16 rushing attempts on the day. Little bit of a uh, equipment malfunction there from Connor Tolley, and they'll get it worked out and get set to replay. So, second and 10 on the 49 yard line. Stevens under center. Connor Ray wide to the left. Handoff is up the middle to, is faked up the middle to Conlin, and Stevens will keep it on the quarterback keeper, and he'll be brought down after the gain of call it five. So that'll bring out third and five. Stevens and Conlon are so good at that. Uh, Conlon got hit as if he was the ball carrier, and that's who I thought had the ball. So it'll be third and five on the 44. 
Stevens under center, two receivers either side. Stevens looks to throw, has pressure in his face, almost intercepted by Nick King on the coverage. So that'll bring out fourth and five. We'll see if the Hawks go for it. My guess is they'll punt it with the, the lead. But Tommy Stevens is the punter, so we'll see exactly what they choose to do. When your quarterback is also your punter, there's always trickery involved, but it looks like they're just going to set up to run a play. So five needed. Riker Stout is wide to the right. Aaron Sandy wide to the left. Conlon in the backfield. Stevens looks to throw. Looks for Connor Ray. Has him on the left side. Makes a man miss. Gets to the 30 before he's brought down. Tackle made that time by number 19, Mark Nally. So Connor Ray with the reception. Gets to the 29. So it's a 20 yard pass from Stevens to Ray. And Conlon gets it on the handoff. He'll be swallowed up immediately by Jacob Stevenson for a loss of two. So there is a Franklin community player on the ground and the trainers will come out to attend to him. It'll be second and 11 on the 30 yard line. Conlon had absolutely nowhere to go, got pressured right away and just wasn't able to uh, get any, any kind of opening to uh, cut the ball back. We definitely hope the player on the ground is okay. He is moving, uh, so that's obviously a good sign. We'll uh, don't want to speculate on what type of in injury it could possibly be, <clears throat> but it was a big hit, and he'll sit up now. Player is actually Nick Welsh. So obviously, him sitting up is definitely a good sign. And trainers will still tend to him. Minute 16 left to go in the third quarter, 22-17. And he'll actually get to his feet now. So that's obviously a good sign that he's able to get up and walk off on his own power. And he'll hear it from the crowd. Continues to get a little bit colder degree by degree up here. So it'll be second and 11. Aaron Sandy wide to the left. In the slot is Cameron Evans. Wide to the right is Riker Stout. Stevens in the shotgun. Conlon is the running back to his left. Stevens showing blitz. Does Franklin Community. He'll pitch it out to Conlon. Conlon has room to work with. Hits the hole hard. He'll get close to the first down marker, maybe shy by one. So call it a gain of 10 on the play. Pressure there by Franklin Community. Forced the play uh, from Stevens to Conlon very early there on the option. Call that a gain of 10 by Conlon on the rush. He's got 117 yards very quickly on the day. It'll be third and one. 20 seconds left to go in the third quarter. Stevens once again under center. He'll hand off to Conlon. Conlon plows ahead. He'll be very close to that first down marker. Maybe initially did get pushed back. See exactly where they spot it as the third quarter runs to an end. Looks like he'll actually be a yard short. So it'll be fourth and one. So they'll switch sides. Yeah, 
So, uh, very, uh, only one score in that third quarter from Decatur Central. Franklin Community has to get something going in the fourth quarter. They just don't throw the ball very well, and when they get into a hole like this, it makes it harder for them to dig their way out. They're definitely a, uh, we're going to run the ball and uh, slow you down defensively type of team. And I, they have slowed down Decatur Central. This is a team that scores 52 points per game. They're, you know, with one quarter to play, they've only scored 22. So, you know, that part of the challenge has been accepted, but Franklin Community has not been able to keep pace scoring the ball. So it'll be fourth and one on the 20 yard line here at the start of the fourth quarter. Hawks trying to increase their lead. One receiver to the right is Riker Stout. Very quickly, the handoff goes up the middle. Believe that was Conlon on the carry, and he'll have enough for the first down. So, Stommy Stevens really got the uh, play in quickly and got it done as the one, call it two yard gain, three yard gain actually by Conlon will be enough to move the change. Chains. One receiver to the right is Riker Stout, one to the left is Connor Ray. Stevens goes under center. Conlon is the running back behind him. Dakota Stillwell, the motion man. Conlon gets it on fake. Tommy Stevens faked the handoff, and he'll be brought down in the backfield. Tackle made that time by number 19, Mark Nally. Jacob Stevenson also there on the tackle. So that'll be a loss of one for Tommy Stevens. Second and 11 on the 18 yard line. Tommy Stevens goes into the shotgun. Riker Stout wide to the right, wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Looks like Dakota Sidwell is in the slot. Stevens looks to pitch out, finds Conlon on the option. And Conlon plows ahead, gets yard after yard after yard after the initial contact. He might be short of the first down marker though. Gets it down to the 10 yard line exactly. <laughs> so an eight yard gain there by Conlon. Wide to the right is Riker Stout. Wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Cameron Evans behind Conlon in the eye. Handoff goes to Cameron Evans, and he does not get much, if anything. Maybe a gain of one. Cameron Evans on the carry. Right down by number 29, Chad Williams. So it'll be fourth and one. So the Hawks, as usual, will elect to go for it. Riker Stout goes wide to the right. Aaron Sandy wide to the left. Evans behind Conlon in the eye. Stevens hands off to Evans. He plows ahead. He'll have the first down and more down to call it the four-yard line, maybe the five. Cameron Evans with the carry. It'll be first and go Hawks. So he'll get to the four-yard line. Check that the five yard line. So six yard gain there by Evans. So it's first and goal on the five. 
Stevens fakes the handoff, has pressure, rolls out, evades it, looking downfield, has his man. It's Cameron Evans in the back of the end zone for the touchdown. And so we'll be on to try the point after touchdown. Kick is up and good. So it'll be 29-7. So that's So's first PAT of the day. left to go in the fourth quarter. The Hawks with commanding lead, 29-7 over the Franklin Community Grizzly Cubs. That touchdown, I mean, no game's never out of reach, but with the passing attack, Franklin Community, it's definitely going to be hard for them to make up this uh, deficit as they don't have much of a passing game. So far on the night, Steer is one of six for eight yards, adding to his total of 16 of 51 on the year. Excuse me, 16 of 46 on the year. So So will get set set to kick off to Williams and McNally, who are deep to return. Coming up to field it is Williams. He'll get to the 25, to the 30, before he's brought down, and that's where the Franklin Grizzly Cubs will come out on offense. First and 10 on the 31-yard line for the Grizzly Cubs. 8.52 left to go in the fourth quarter. You're listening to the audiosportsonline.com coverage of Decatur Central High School football. Steer has it, looks to throw to the right side. Ooh, he'll be down, but the reception was complete to Damon Munn on this six yard gainer, and he tried to option uh, on the uh, play, but he'll be down. So it'll be a gain of Call it six on the play. So it'll be second and three. Steer fakes the handoff and has it, and he'll be tackled down from behind. Ball looks to be out, and it'll be interesting to see who has it. No indication yet from the refs. The ball was out at the end of the play. And it looks like Franklin Community will retain possession. And it'll be enough for the first down. So Steer on the quarterback. Keeper gets four. But he almost fumbled it. Or if he did fumble it, it was close. So Steer once again go under center. He options it to the right side, and he'll be brought down once again close to the the, uh, line scrimmage. So it'll be second and 10 after the no-gainer by Steer. Steer with the keeper. Right now by Zach Mews and 32 Brian Wells. So actually, they'll give him credit for one on that run. So it'll be second and nine on the 42-yard line. Wide to the left is Evan Sipes, steer under center. And he'll fake it on the end around to Chad Williams, who gets one, maybe two on the play. So it'll be third and nine, or check that third and... Really only got a couple of inches on the play, so it'll still be third and nine. 6.52 6.52 left to go in the fourth. 29-7 in favor of the Hawks. 
Franklin community trying to work their way back into it with a little time left. And flags will come out as looks like Lucas McNeil crossed, uh, forced an offensive player to move on the encroachment. So it'll be a five yard penalty against the Hawks. So it'll be third and four. Steer fakes the handoff and he'll be brought down after a rush of one maybe on the key quarterback keeper. Call it a gain of two. So fourth and two on the 49 yard line. Wide to the left is Evan Sipes. Steer once again under center. Motion man is Williams. And Steer looks to change the play. Wide to the right is Munn. Steer once again, or hands off up the middle. Leave the carry by Ross Barr. Um, and he'll get hit immediately and push back. So. It'll be a turnover on Downs after a great defensive stand by the Decatur Central Hawks. Zach Muniz there on the tackle as well as Jacob Scott. So the Hawks will take over possession. They'll be first and 10 on the 50. Ross Barr not having the day he's typically accustomed to. I haven't met Nine rushing attempts for 11 yards on the day. Once again, those are unofficial. Those are just my stats. <clears throat> First and 10 on the 50 for the Hawks. Cameron Evans, the motion man. Pitch out goes to Conlon. Conlon gets it, crosses the 50 to the 55. Still on his feet, cross the 40. Still plowing ahead, gets to the 30. Refusing to be brought down is Eli Conlon on the big time run down to the 25 yard line. On the 25 yard carry by Conlon, just refusing to go down on that carry. Conlon just plowing over would-be tacklers on that 25-yard pickup, and they'll be first and 10 on the 25. Connor, check that. Aaron Sandy wide to the right. Riker Stout wide to the left. Stevens under center. Motion man is Dakota Sidwell from right to left. Handoff will be given to Evans up the middle, and he'll plow ahead to close to the 20-yard line. So a gain of call it four for Cameron Evans. He's got 31 rushing yards on the day. As well as the five yard reception for the touchdown. That was actually his first uh, receiving touchdown of the year earlier. And Dakota Sidwell will get it on the pitch out. And he'll try and plow ahead, but he'll get pushed back immediately. Lost a yard, maybe two. We'll see exactly where Ford Progress puts him. He'll get a yard off of the Ford Progress on that run to Sidwell. So it'll be third and five at the 20. 426 left to go in this fourth quarter. Clock continues to move, which is exactly what you... The Cater Central Hawks want it to do. Riker Stout wide to the right, wide to the left is Aaron Sandy. Motion man is Sidwell. Stevens tried pitching it out to him, but fumbled with the ball, and he'll be brought down way in the backfield by number 28, Jason Moran, the 5'9", 165-pound junior. So it'll be a loss of about 10. So it'll be fourth and 15. And the Hawks will go for it. Up big, I I, I, I feel like maybe they should punt. You, you know, if you're not going to try the long field goal, at least try and punt it. But Stevens will get it, and he'll look to throw. And it'll be picked off. And running it back to the 40 before he's pushed out of bounds. 
That was Nick King there on the, the interception. So an interception there by Nick King. And he'll get it back to the 40 yard line. Steer will come back out under center. Motion man is Williams. He fakes the pitch out, looks downfield to the middle of the field, and he'll be picked off. Picked off that time by number 32. He's got it to the 55, still on his feet, down to the 40. That is Brian Wells there on the interception. The 5'8", 165 pound junior. He has 40 tackles on the year. That's his first interception. And he'll get maybe five on the yards back from the, they caught it about 50, so it was actually about a 10-yard interception. And the Cater Central will take it right back. So takeaway's been a factor here tonight between fumbles and now the two picks back-to-back. That is Sears' third interception on the season. So it's first and 10 on the 40. Stevens under center, Riker Stout wide to the right, Aaron Sandy wide to the left. Handoff goes to Cameron Evans up the middle, makes one man miss, and he'll plow ahead and get four on it. The man he made miss was number 17, Matthew Warwick. So call it a gain of three for Cameron Evans. So it'll be second and seven on the 37. Clock continues to move, 2.44 left to go in this fourth quarter. Decatur looks to just try and run it out. As I was saying before, I felt like they should have punted before the interception. Uh, handoff goes up the middle to Dakota Sidwell. He'll plow ahead for two before he's brought down. Ball will be placed at about the 34-yard line. So it'll be third and call it four. After the three-yard gainer by Sidwell. Riker Stout wide to the right, wide to the left is... Aaron Sandy, Stevens in the pistol. Now he'll go under center. 29-7 in favor of Decatur Central, 148 left to go. Stevens looks to throw and missing his receiver, his intended receiver, Aaron Sandy on the left side. Sandy will stay down. And he'll be picked up by his teammates, so nothing serious there. And it'll be fourth and call it four. Sandy will jog over to the sidelines under his own power, which is always a good sign after the big-time hit on the incomplete pass from Stevens. So it'll be fourth and four, and once again, the Hawks will go for it. I still don't like this move. I feel like they, they need to punt it or... Right, your stout wide to the right. Motion man... Is 32. Evans, or excuse me, Stevens looks to run. Stevens still on his feet, too close to the marker. We'll see exactly where they spot it. Gets to about the 30 yard line from the 34. Needed to get four yards. It'll be close. And it'll be a turnover on downs as he was not able to get there. So it'll be on the 31 yard line after the three yard rush by Stevens. I just don't like it because you have the game well in hand. To me, you should punt in that situation at the very least if you're not going to try for the long field goal. I understand you want to keep possession and try and run the clock out, but at the same time, it's you've got the game well in hand. 29-7 is the lead for Decatur Central. 137 left to go in the fourth. One receiver wide to the right, one to the left, steer under center. Motion man is Campos. He'll get on the pitch out. Flea faker 
and going down and getting it. And it'll be an incomplete pass. Campos got it on the pitch out and looks to throw it on a, almost a flea flicker type play. Normally that goes back to the quarterback, but Campos threw it and uh, was almost picked off by Brian Wells, who just had the last pick for Decatur Central. So it'll be an incomplete pass, second and 10. Two receivers out wide right, steer under center. Pitch out goes to Jake Stevenson, and he'll plow ahead for maybe a yard before he's brought down. So it'll be third, and Ford Progress will give him a couple more. So it'll be third and call it six, maybe seven, after the three-yard gain from Stevenson. <laughs> 58 seconds left to go. Steer comes out under center. Two receivers to the left. He'll hand off to Ross Barr on the right side, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. So the clock will continue to roll. Twenty-five seconds, and they'll respot it. <clears throat> Game clock ahead of the play clock, so the Franklin Community does not have to run another play, and it looks like they will not. So let us wait for the play clock to end, and that's that'll do it. So Franklin Community uh, will not run another play, and Decatur Central will get the win tonight. So we'll take a very quick break and then bring you back the post-game show and recap everything that's gone down um, tonight for you here in just a minute. Welcome back. This is the post game show on audiosportsonline.net. I'm JP Sinclair. Uh, recap the game for you. It was a uh, pretty much one sided affair as Decatur Central really came out and did what they needed to do against a Franklin community team that uh, was both teams looking to go into the sectionals on a high note. Um, but 29 7 is the final score in favor of Decatur Central. Um, interceptions and uh, were the story of late and then fumbles early. So it was a back and forth game that relied on a lot of takeaways from both these teams. Um, you know, defense for Franklin Community did a, a solid job holding a high-powered uh, Decatur Central offense to only 29 points, but unable to put the points up themselves um, was Franklin Community. And also you look at the fact that this is a Franklin Community team that their offense comes from rushing the ball, just was not able to rush it effectively tonight. So reset the scene for you. It was senior night, and it was a big win for Decatur Central uh, as they move ahead, and they'll take on Cathedral now in sectionals. Um, so obviously you want to go into sectionals on a winning note, and that's exactly what Decatur Central did tonight. Um, take a look at some of the final stats we had uh, for this game. <clears throat> take a look at the Grizzly Cubs for, first. Um, their quarterback, Steer, uh, did not have a, a very good game. We, we knew they were just not a passing team. That's just not who they are. He had two, uh, two completed passes. For, um, on the, he, had two, uh, he was two of eight on the game uh, for 14 yards. Um, his... His uh, passes went to Munn and Barr. Um, I must have missed one because he also had a pass to Williams as well. So um, I guess he was about three of nine. Uh, those receptions were by uh, six yards for Munn, eight for Barr, and then uh, I have Williams with a, I believe, a 15-yarder. So uh, and then looking at the rushing for Ross Barr, you know, this is that the leading rusher for this uh, Franklin Community team. And give credit to the uh, Decatur Central Hawks. They held him well below his average. 
Now, Ross Barr is normally averages seven yards per attempt. He came into the game with 141 yards per game um, and 1,130 yards thus far on the season. And, you know, after 10 attempts, he only had 11 yards by my count. Um, so, you know, the Hawks did a great job keying in on him early. Stevenson uh, had one rush for three yards late in the game. Campos had five rushes for 21 yards. Uh, Williams had five rushes for 79 yards. He had the one really big gainer of um, probably close to 75 <clears throat> on his second rushing attempt, which really uh, set him up big for the rest of the day. So five rushes for 79 yards is a very good line for Williams. Steer uh, had seven rushes for 21 yards. The Grizzly Cubs had three penalties for a total of 15 yards, as well as an interception by number 26, Nick King, for about 10 yards. <clears throat> and they also had three fumbles, all of which were lost. For the Decatur Central Hawks, um, they had three fumbles as well. Uh, two of them uh, were lost to the... Grizzly Cubs. Uh, Tommy Stevens had a uh, very solid day. Uh, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight of 15 on the day for Tommy Stevens for 92 yards. Not a bad line passing it for him. Um, his, re- his receptions went to Riker Stout. He had one catch for seven yards. Aaron Sandy had three catches for 19, a very big day for him. Connor Ray had two receptions for 33 yards. And Cameron Evans had the one uh, reception uh, that was in the end zone for the touchdown that was five yards. Conlon uh, struggled early but was able to rebound after uh, the fumble as well. Um, he had 22 rushes for 153 yards on the day. Cameron Evans had 34 uh, rushing yards on 11 attempts. Dakota Sidwell also had a very big day, 12 rushing uh, attempts for 131 yards. And then quarterback Tommy Stevens, uh, 10 rushings for 41 yards. So it was 1-1 one of one on PATs. The uh, Hawks had four penalties um, thrown on them for 30 yards, so... Um, those are the stats that I have. Once again, um, those are just the best of my ability. Those are not official by any way, shape, or form. Um, but they give you a little bit of a story of how the game went down and was played. Um, but those are our final stats on the AudioSportsOnline.com post-game show. Um, if I had to give a player of the game, you know, Conlon, I'd, I'd have to give it to either Conlon or Sidwell. Sidwell was the uh, main workhorse. Had a slow start as well, um, but was able to get it going and ended up with 131 yards. But Conlon, to me, is the main, wor- uh, you know, He's the go-to running back for this Decatur Central Hawks team. And 22 rushes for 150 yard, three yards is not a bad stat line at the end of the night. He did have the fumbles, but he was able to re- overcome them. Those were early. So um, moving ahead against Cathedral, you're definitely going to need them to have a big game. So I'm going to give the player of the game to Eli Conlon. Take a look at the next game for Decatur Central. They'll be back in action against the tough Cathedral High School um, Irish, who are 4-4 four and four on the year. But they you know, don't, let, let, don't let that record for you, fool you. This is... This is the Cathedral <laughs> Irish we're talking about. So 4-4 four four in the year, but they played one of the toughest schedules. They have one of the hardest strength of schedules, um, you know, in, in the state of Indiana. Um, so obviously, and we talked a little bit about Cathedral. I mean, as of 2011, Cathedral still has the most wins in the state of Indiana, you know, with 671. And, you know, they rank third all time for state finals appearances in Indiana. Um, you know, and, you know, they had the three-peat of state championships not even that long ago, 2010, 2011, 2012. Uh, they were forced to move up, you know, do their uh, success uh, to 5A. So um, that'll be an interesting matchup on it still. Um, but that'll be next week here at Decatur Central High School. It will be a gold out uh, for Decatur Central as um, they're asking fans to come and wear gold. So it should be gold on both sides because uh, that's also Decatur Central. So uh, Decatur Central and uh, Cathedral both wear gold. So it'll definitely be a gold out one way or another. But Franklin Community, they'll face Whiteland in their sectional draw. Um, I don't have Whiteland's uh, record on hand. I know they've had a pretty solid year, um, but it'll still be a good team. Um, like I said, this is a Franklin Community team that's on the rise. Um, came in tonight five, you know, five, uh, five and three on the year, drops to five and four now, but obviously still a solid season under uh, first-year coach Adam Reese. Um, they're definitely on the up, and they're definitely going to be uh, a possible rival for this Decatur Central Hawks team moving forward because uh, Adam Reese has them going in the right direction. Um, so this has been the post game show on AudioSportsOnline.com. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. It's certainly been my pleasure to be invited into your Friday night. Thank you to Gator Central High School and Athletic Director Kelly McWilliams for hosting us here tonight. Uh, I want to give a big shout out to uh, our camera operator and one of my best friends, Kevin Scott, for working the camera tonight. I think he did a very solid job and keeps my hands free to try and do my best with the stats for you guys tonight. Again, the final score, 29-7 to in favor of the Cater Central High School Hawks. Decatur will be back in action next Friday at 7 p.m. against Cathedral. I'm J.P. Sinclair. Have a good night.